Good everyone, I'm going to this video. Today we have a review on the Chiha Shotgun. So the Chiha Shotgun, obviously we've done the first drive on it, is essentially a Chiha modified to have a 120mm gun strapped to it. And well, this tank costs 1,000 golden eagles. Do I think it's worth it? You're joking, right? Do you really think this thing's worth 1,000 GE? No, this thing is not worth it. But there is a way to get more for your money, shall we say. So, on the Gaijin store, there is something called the Japanese Starter Pack. That comes with the Chiha Shotgun, the A7HE1, three days of, well sorry, a week of premium, and 120,000 silver lines. That is much more worth your money than the tank itself. Trust me, you'll, you'll be thanking me later. You don't want to spend thousand G on this thing, it is not worth the money. But the Chiha shotgun is actually not that bad of a tank. I mean it's got its flaws, which I'll obviously cover today. And it faces some enemies that it can't do shit to, but again, I'll point those out. So the Chiha shotgun obviously only fires Hei Chi, and Hei Chi is debatable at best. It it does the job. I'm not gonna say that like I'm not gonna say it doesn't. If you hit a tank with it and you can pen it, it's gonna kill it one shot. I can guarantee you that. But the problem is is that you face quite a couple of tanks that just you can't scratch. You literally cannot scratch them. The Chiha shotgun used to be one point seven and it suffered even harder. I mean it had about thirty two, thirty five millimeters of pen on its HE round. But again, it's it's not going to make a huge amount of difference. Um, the tanks that it can face, such as the B1 Biz, some of the French, even the French light tanks can shrug off this HE round. Um, yeah, it's not good for taking out Frenchies, and it's certainly not good at taking out Italians either. Although, if you do hit the whole front, it has a good chance of penning. If you hit the whole side, it will penetrate, no matter the range. Another couple of vehicles I struggled with from the front were M3 Stewards, and they tended to be more harder depending on the model. Now it can still be done, however I would actually recommend shooting just under the gun barrel first, so that way you get a good spit splash in. You can take out the gun breach, the gun barrel, the machine gun, stuff like that. Maybe even get lucky and take out the driver if you've got enough luck on your, under your belt. Alternatively, you could try splashing a shot just to the side of the turret and see if it will shrapnel down into the crew compartment. I have had that happen and I have scored a kill because of it. And for anyone else, yes, you can use this gun as an AA piece. However, I do not advise it because the reload rate does not allow for it, really. I have scored exactly two AA kills, I think, or one. And both times they had to fly right at me and I just thought, fuck it, pull the trigger and I ended up getting the kill. Needless to say, when this 120 lands on a biplane, it doesn't leave a lot left. Let's just say that. But yeah, I don't think this tank is worth it on its own. But if you get the Japanese starter pack, I definitely think it's worth the money. Because that way you can get more for your money. And, well, whilst the Chiha Shotgun is not the best premium tank you can get, it's certainly a derpy one. And it's certainly a fun one. That's for definite. However, if you are going to spend money to buy the Chiha shotgun and you need a, you need a talisman to tank, I would actually recommend the Chinu. Chinu is a pretty solid tank. If not, the Japanese Chaffee. That's another good choice. Alternatively, if you want to go a little lower, the Honey 1, Honey 3, and Chihi are pretty good solid choices. And now that the Ho Ro is ranked 2, I would actually recommend the Ho Ro as well. And me. Well, sorry, not, not May. And hey, if you've got a bit more G than what you thought, get yourself cheated too. This thing's bloody amazing. Doesn't really have a line up to back it up, but yeah, you can chuck in some three threes in there. I mean, they seem to work pretty well anyway. But yeah, this tank is certainly not the most greatest tank that I've played, but it's certainly a fun, derpy sort of tank. And I did enjoy it, but... It did have its flaws, as I said. Yeah, it was one air kill, I thought it was. But unfortunately, the teams are not too great because of the B1 spam. But nine deaths, one air kill, 46 grand targets. Not bad to say this vehicle gets such a bad reputation, which I don't actually think it deserves. 
Now, there has been some people debating, which I'm going to put the replay on now, just whilst I blabber here. Um, there has been some people debating whether this vehicle had armor-piercing rounds. I can't say for certain. I've only seen two sources that say, whilst AP rounds were quite rare, I don't know if they exist. I haven't seen a single document stating that, or stating about AP penetration. And even then, I don't think it'd be that great in the first place, given that it's a high, let's say, it's it's a very short gun, as you can tell by the name of the tank. And yeah, it's it's not particularly the best sort of thing. Forgot to go over the skins, by the way. This tank does come with a couple of extra skins that you can unlock. You can unlock a brown camouflage, which obviously you saw in the camera, all in the hangar. And there's also a winter one. I always run a Japanese tank in brown the moment I get it, because it, it just, like... I don't know what it is about Japanese tanks, but they always suit brown. They just do. They're not shit tanks. Before anyone makes that joke, they're not shit tanks. They just they just get kicked in the balls by Gaijin not adding anything to them. Honestly, Japan needs some new tanks. I mean... God, the last one they had, I think, was the Type 90B. And even then, that's a high-tier, top-tier MBT. And as far as I can tell, there's literally no difference between it and this previous one. Apart from like a couple of extra bits, which ain't gonna do a whole lot for it. But yeah, Japan really does need some backup tanks. I mean, at 1 3, you can actually assemble a pretty good lineup for this thing, but it's when you get up to it, it's when it's gonna be a problem. So as you saw there, I'm teamed up with Shadow. And by the way, that's one thing you can do you can hold break in a BT 7 without even hitting it properly. Always nice. Kill number one. But um, I've teamed up with Shadow, however, unfortunately, he has just been killed by the guy I just killed with artillery. Taurus, you have a rival in the death department. Now, my aim was a bit poor there, however, I still shrapneled and killed the driver. Now, you noticed, when I hit that shot on the BT, a lot of it was eaten up by the, the parts of the chassis. That was a bad aim shot by me. A lot of it was eaten up by spaced armor in the chassis. That will happen. So, don't expect it to be a always one-shot machine. Because unfortunately, that's not the way the, the Chiha shotgun works. Kill number two. But I, I did start to get the hang of this gun towards the, like, towards the first few games of it. And again, I like the tank. It's just, it, it's not going to be everything, and I don't expect it to. I mean, it's got 30 mils of pen. It's not really going to be... It's not really going to be killing absolutely everything on this battlefield. I mean, the only tank it may struggle against is probably the Stridsfog and M39 that you could hit the turret and just fuck up to. Um, what else have they got? I'd probably say the M2 medium might be a bit of a problem. So Shadow, for some reason, thought there was a tank behind that piece of rubble there, and obviously I'm using the hull mounted MG to mark it out. For some reason, the, the players at this BR seem to think that the machine gun on this thing is like an anti-aircraft piece, because that, that's how I got the I-15 to bait towards my 120, by the way. I just fired the hull mounted him, he thought I was an AA, came to try and strafe me, and I just fired the 120 in his face. So obviously you can see there, teammate there in a Panzer III, as you can see, trying to give me a hand. He takes out the BT-7 I was aiming at, and he backs up behind the rip. He backs up behind the wall. And as you can tell, look at the ammunition. This thing doesn't carry a lot of ammo. That was a blind shot, by the way. I didn't actually see that guy, but kill number three. This thing doesn't have a lot of ammunition. 23 rounds is not a lot, considering that Sometimes your vehicle will not even kill the target in one shot, as we saw with the BT-5 earlier. So obviously the, the part of the chassis actually ate most of the HG shrapnel. So there I just used the whole mount again to make sure that was the tank I killed. It was, so me and Shadow decide, okay, let's move up. We might as well. I recommend sticking with your team with this vehicle. If your team starts to die in an enemy tank, such as the B1 starts to come down the road, get yourself out of there. You ain't killing it. I, There is actually a way to kill a B1, but it's so unreliable, I would not advise engaging a B1. Again, there you can see. 
that one hit a drive wheel and did next to nothing inside the vehicle. Like I said, this this is not going to be a vehicle where you're just one tapping everything. And that was actually a ricochet protecting Shadow there. I'm actually, well, Shadow's actually being, well, using me as spaced armor. I mean, not much spaced armor because it's thickest armor on the things around the gun itself, the 35 millimeters thick. But it's it's not too bad. I mean, the armor has saved me a couple of times, so don't knock the armor on these Japanese tanks. They're actually pretty reliable. So I'm saying to Shadow, do not go around that corner. And unfortunately, the squeezy boy's brakes and steering are not suitable for that sort of job. And as you can tell, he kind of had an argument with the Chinese MA and the MA1 in no short order. Now on the topic of the tank in all the Japanese tanks, um, Japanese tanks tend to be known for their good gun depression. This one... It's not too bad. I mean, eight degrees. It's it's not going to be what you're used to. Just to point out, it's, it's certainly not going to be what you're used to. But all I will say is, it's it's good. It's not going to be everything, but it's good. At eight degrees, you can work most fridge lines that you'll see, and you can actually stick this vehicle hold down quite well. So at this point, I spot a T26, and I get rather lucky there. He hits the back of the turret. And does absolutely nothing, pretty much. I mean, he wounds a couple of crew, but that's really it. And as you can tell, he had three tanks firing at him. It was only a matter of who was going to get the first shot in, and it was the Panzer IV E. So as you can tell, I'm down to 12 rounds, and we ain't got long of this battle left, but yeah, I I certainly would like with the fact that this thing is actually like it's it's a good tank. I'm gonna like it's I like it. Everyone has their own opinion. Some people will probably jump on this review and go, Joe, what are you fucking talking about? This thing is freaking garbage. Go ahead. In the day, it's personal preference. I like this sort of vehicle. Sure enough, it's not going to be killing everything. That is correct. You can, you can put that in the comments, and I will believe you. This thing will not be killing everything. But there are some moments where this vehicle just gives me an absolute laugh, and... I really enjoyed this thing. I mean, obviously, as I mentioned, B1s, they are a nightmare because you can barely scratch their paint most of the time. But, y yes, I was looking to get the shot on him with the 120 before anyone put certain comments to. But, <laughs> that that's the thing. Like, I wanted to see if I could hit a plane with the 120. And, yes, it is doable, but you have to get the bugger to fly at you first. So... It's not particularly hard, and even then the 7.7 would probably do you better. And I mean that as in the 7.7 in the hull. That would probably do you better. Additionally, this vehicle does have a mounting for a 7.7 on the roof, as you can notice by just next to the commander's hatch. That appears to be a mounting for a 7.7, because I've seen the Chinu, then the Chinu 2 has it. So I don't get why this doesn't. But that would be nice to have. It would be very nice to have the vehicle at least some form of protection against these biplanes because obviously the 120 is rather inefficient for that job I mean if it is a plane it's going to kill it but the hull amount of 77 can only go up so far so that's why I'd, I'd love to see this tank with a roof mount machine gun it would really help it out as far as I know as well some of the later Japanese tanks had additional armor packages I think the Chihi and the Chinu had a it was out when they bolted on an extra, I think it was 25 millimeters of armor. I cannot confirm this. I've only heard in rumors about this stuff. And one last thing to say about this vehicle, the turret traverse. It's not great. But let's be realistic. If you turn into the turret, you might as well turn the hull as well. And I'd have probably gotten that kill a bit sooner. Kill number four. And obviously I'm looking around and here comes a AMC 35 ACG-1. Not a bad little tank. I mean, it's certainly not going to be everything in a in a gunfight, but it will be a G-Hard short gun if, if, if the guy actually has a competent brain cell. Which, let's be realistic, is a French tank. Not many people tend to have that. So at that point, I shrapnel him in the turret, but he still has the gunner alive. You may have noticed that I took out the loader and the turret drive. The loader, for some reason, appears to snack on 120mm rounds like their breakfast, but 
French tanks, what can you expect? And that is actually one of the few French tanks you can actually kill, so be thankful that I'm showing you that, because well, the AFC has at most 25mm of armor and nowhere it's stopping this, sh this shell, I'll, I'll say that right now. So at this point, I drive around the corner, obviously I'm, I'm just watching him, see where he is. He doesn't have the gun pointed at me, because obviously the turret's being repaired. And that gets me my ace for the game. So like I say, is the Chiha shotgun the best tank I've driven? No. Is it fun? Yes. Just don't fight a beat one with it. You will not win. I'll tell you that right now, you will not win. I mean, there is a way to kill a B1, but I've never done it, so I can't say for certain. But do I think the tank itself is worth the money? No. If you want this tank, get yourself the Japanese starter pack. You will save yourself a lot of ball egg, and you'll actually get more for your money. But anyway, I'll let you guys off. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all on the next one.